Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, diorama to go with the tank that I made last week, the Whippet tank. So um, there's lots of variety. I love making trench dioramas because uh, there's so much variety in how trenches were laid out. When you see photographs um, of very intricately designed trenches with lots of duck boards and sandbags and neat and tidy um, revetments, usually they're a support trench or a reserve trench or even a training trench back in England. And the, the more realistic um, trenches that were dug under fire and that were battered by artillery in the front line were more often um, just mud or uh, scruffier. Um, you can usually tell them because they have a firing step uh, showing that they're a frontline trench. And um, yeah, when you're doing your research, bear in mind that if they're in caps, uh, the British soldiers, that's before 1916, uh, so the trenches might be shallower and um, a bit more organised and then if they're wearing helmets or gas masks then it's later in the war and the trenches should be deeper um, and because they've been fought over already for for a couple of years they, they might be messier scruffier uh, but I'm going to do quite a tidy one the whippets from 1918 so it's perhaps a trench that's been reused um, a trench that's been occupied, an enemy trench, uh, or the whippet's just behind the lines and it's a reserve trench. But I've got all my coffee stirrers, my usual tools that I use. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, guys, um, coffee stirrers, matchsticks uh, that I bought from a craft store, um, also air drying clay I'm going to use in this diorama my usual plaster and coffee grounds spent coffee grounds mixture just to get a bit of mud texture um the usual base that i use is this hardwood um a composite type floorboard <clears throat> which does which they don't warp and they were free because they somebody was take lifting them up and replacing their flooring um there's no shiny laminate f surface on it as well. It's very dense, kind of MDF. Um, and it's very straight and flat, and it stays straight as well. So I just PVA glued the thick piece of polystyrene that you can see. That was just a piece of packaging. Uh, but I've tended recently to use these, these thicker pieces uh, rather than build up layers as I used to in the past using odds and ends that I'd salvaged from from different packaging. Um, so I want to have plenty of space on there for the whippet. As you can see, I've marked it out. But because I do a parapet um, on the trench, uh, I'll turn it to an angle um, in the end. And the space that's on the battlefield next to the whippet, I'm going to put um, a puddle a, a, a kind of shell hole filled with water um, and use some of the still water effect by AK Interactive so that's the plan guys um, I'd seen something that is, isn't shown in the initial photographs at the start of this video but I'd seen a um, I think it was a a still from a World War One First World War film that was made in the twenties, and it was a sort of alcove in the trench that was designed just for the uh, ladders to get out of the trench, and that uh, that's what I wanted to do because um, it just break up the um, straight trench. Um, firing step and all that kind of stuff with something a bit different and um, I had some ladders and a, a sort of bench that came with the ICM a British soldiers kit there's a there's a kit of 135 figures from this period an officer and three or four soldiers but it comes with 
a sort of uh, cross section of a trench that they're in and I don't know how I'm going to incorporate that into a diorama because it's very it's molded plastics very clean um, straight lines and I don't know how it'll look uh, but all I've done is salvage the ladder from it and the one of the benches that is a firing step made of rough sawn wood so I'm going to incorporate them at the end uh, so this little alcove is just a sort of um, a sap just for the just for the ladders, so the soldiers could leave the trench uh, and get onto the battlefield. <clears throat> There's a great variety, guys. If you're building trench dioramas, there's so many different things you can do. Um, if you look, some late war British trenches just seem to be draped with um, a tarpaulin of some kind, canvas, uh, just to stop the soldiers getting constantly covered in mud. Um, there's a lot of late war deep trenches where there's just a duck board and then there's these canvases just thrown over the, the sides um, and that's easy to replicate. I've used foil, uh, tin foil, aluminium foil in the past uh, and painted it and you get the creases of the foil look like creases in fabric and um, but you can use any materials really I suppose that are, that are very thin anything you can find um, I wouldn't use cotton um, but anything you can find which is thin enough that it doesn't have a texture to it so I used the the match the craft matchsticks um, as the duck boards on the ground, and I kind of tried to use um, half lengths and full lengths and make it a bit more interest out of it. And I've glued them down, but I will trim them in line with the base of the diorama, and then. Um, I've used, as I say, coffee stirrers, just cut rather than snapped. If you snap them, you do get the effect of like a wooden plank that comes to a rough end. But I think for the for the purposes of a built trench, uh, I just snip them. Um, but different sizes as well. Um, and they're the uprights, the verticals that cover the trench wall. So I've done a parapet of polystyrene, but I'm using now the air drying clay to um, backfill that to the polystyrene level. And um, then I'll build the sandbags on top of that. These MHA kits, because uh, as you saw, if you saw my Whippet video, these um, cheaper kits have allowed me to do the two things that I love, which is a tank and uh, a First World War kind of trench scene. Because um, the Tamiya and Meng kits, the First World War tanks are a bit pricier. But... Um, Uh, yeah, so I don't go to extreme lengths to get a realistic sandbag effect uh, using seams and uh, imprinting fabric onto the plasticine or onto the uh, clay to give it a fabric look. It's more for the the overall effect for me, just the um, the combined effects of having a sandbag wall, which when it's painted and weathered. Uh, I don't think it matters that it's got um, that much detail and uh, you've done a lot of work on each one to pinch a seam. I've seen people using tweezers to pinch to pinch the uh, sewn seam down one side. Um, so yeah, I just, I just cut off a 
pea-sized piece, flatten it with my fingers, and then pinch either end and let it kind of bulge in the middle. Um, so it's the shape of a sandbag. Um, because the air-dried clay doesn't uh, shrink as it dries um, or crack or anything like that, I've literally just put it on and then started working around it and started painting things because I don't think you need to wait for it to dry hard, which takes a couple of days. Uh, I've had only good experiences with the DAS air drying clay. And um, I was really pleased with the effect that the wooden boards went up to a certain height and then there was mud and sandbags above that to protect the soldiers. Uh, I think that's quite a realistic effect. And um, like I say, you could even get it to this point and then drape some canvases, some fabric effects um, over that and use a wet brush to push it into position so you can see the texture of the wooden boards and the, the, the sandbags underneath. You will see that if you look at some pictures of trenches. Um, but uh, I was happy with just leaving it like this. So, I think I mentioned in my Whippet video that... Um, I did have two box sets that I bought uh, when the MH um, Mark IV tank and the Whippet tank kits arrived because I thought I'll put soldiers on the diorama alongside the vehicles. But uh, I think there's probably enough going on in this in this diorama with the boards and the sandbags and the little accessories um, that I'm not yet sure that I'll do that. Both of the kits that I've bought, the figures um, are uh, the kind of in action, um, fighting, and not just standing around um, relaxing. So a little bit harder to use those kind of figures. Um, they're not just on sentry duty, they're actually uh, fighting. So they're, just to um, make that clear, because I said ICM before, but it's an ICM, British Infantry and Gas Masks, 1917. That's the kit that I bought. And then the Master Box kit is the one, the British soldiers um, with the trench. Um, and, I'll sh and I'll show that I'll show that at some point, because that's, that's some of the parts I took out of that. Um, I've used on this diorama. So it's British Infantry before the attack, First World War era by Masterbox. And that comes with a small section of moulded trench to put the soldiers in. I don't know how that would look just being made up as a section of trench and nothing else with no diorama around it. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a nice little thing. So I used um, the primer that I've been using very recently um, to cover the whole area. Like I say, I've not waited for the air drying clay to go off completely. Um, but I have waited for the plaster to go off, obviously. And for the PVA, I've left it 24 hours for the PVA to set uh, with all the wood panelling and duckboards and planks. I didn't want any of them coming off whilst I was painting it. <coughs> So obviously, you know the key that the key here is um, don't just use one brown over everything. Um, use paint that is matte and don't varnish it. Uh, if you can use some of the mud and dust effects that you've used on the tank, then that's uh, then that'll look effective as well. But um, yeah, I think the key thing is is just getting a design. Really, once you've got a good design. And you've got the materials to make it look sort of realistic. Uh, then you've cracked it. Uh, they, they're a great idea for beginners. These these little trench dioramas. I think they're a great place to start. If you're in 135 and you've maybe bought a couple of boxes of figures. Um, if you're going to start dioramas. These are, these are really easy to do. And there's loads of variety. So you can have a little play around with it. So that's it guys. Um... I think it looks pretty good with the whippet on it. I'm pleased with it. 
and at some point in the future I'm going to do something very similar with the Mark IV tank and a trench diorama and maybe include some of the figures that I've mentioned with that one. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave us a comment. Let you know. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you've done trench dioramas, let me know what you think, what, how you've enjoyed doing that. And uh, if you've done these tanks as well. Um, but thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for your support.